Z-Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm Leo Walder for Kit Guru here at ASRock at Nangang for Computex 2019. And we have here as a starting point a Z390 Tai Chi that's just been a little bit modified into a crazy steampunk typewriter type brass type thing. You've got to love the look of that. I mean, it's absolutely mental. I've actually come here for X570 motherboards, but we saw this and just had to stop. I mean, what can you say apart from, yep, like it. And do look up at Mark's fabrication, the geezer that did it. I can put that man with this PC 100%. One of the big themes of Computex, as we said about 18,000 times so far, is Zen 2 Ryzen 3000. That means X570 chipset, which in turn means PCI Express Gen 4. Here we have the benchmark we've seen a good many times about just what difference that makes to your SSD. The only difference here is that uh, ASRock deals directly with Fison, so this is not a Corsair or Gigabyte or colourful SSD, it is actually a Fison SSD that they've been testing. Apart from that, you've seen it all before and it's blazing fast. And as the boss fella of uh, Fison was saying, it's 5,000 megabytes or 5 gigabytes per second at the moment, but the next gen is going to be 6.5, and he says that's coming quite soon. That's a huge promise. So this technology, it's fast already, it's going to get faster. This motherboard, the X570 Phantom Gaming ITX TB3, is fascinating. So Mini ITX, we've seen a lot of good Mini ITX from ASRock over the years. It's aluminium uh, over the I.O., which acts as a heatsink for VRMs. We've got a tower aluminium cooler, which is going to do something for the VRM cooling. That's good. Two memory modules, just as you expect. They are regular full-size DDR4, just as we'd expect, rather than sodiums. We've got active cooling on the chipset, and we've got TB3. If you come around to the I.O. panel, what we have is Thunderbolt 3 on AMD. Uh, until recently, that simply did not happen. It was Intel only. It turns out, to quote the guy from ASRock, the Thunderbolt uh, consortium don't care. Provided you're within spec, they'll certify you. They just don't care about the fact it's AMD. So this board requires Intel software to function. You have to use Thunderbolt software from Intel for this to work. It works no trouble at all. That's a lot of good stuff on one tiny motherboard, but that is not all. Come round to the CPU socket, Mel. Look at the CPU socket, look for that AMD retention mechanism, it's not there. I mean, obviously the arm is there, I mean, the cooler mechanism ain't there. What you've got are four holes. Those four holes are Intel 11.5X. In other words, you take your AMD board running Thunderbolt, you take, for example, a Corsair H100, you take your pack of Intel mounts for, you know, Core i9, and it works with this. It's absolutely remarkable. It's a brilliant idea. I don't know why, I don't know why it hasn't been done before. The most annoying thing about this entire range of products here, and about this board in particular, is we don't know how much it is. We have no idea on pricing. The reason is apparently AMD has told manufacturers to hold tight on pricing until the launch of Zen 2 Ryzen 3000. So we do not know what this little gem is going to cost. But that is an absolutely cracking motherboard. There are other X570 boards that are innovative in the range, no doubt about it. We're going to get to one over there in particular. But for example, the X570 Phantom Gaming X is conventional. Obviously, X570, active cooling, looks sleek, high-end, uh, loads of slots, armor, and all the rest of it. When it comes to the VRMs, it's old school. We haven't been able to get full specs out of uh, ASRock, but as far as I'm aware, IR35201 controllers across the piece. Therefore, when you see multiple phases, they're using doublers. They have not gone Infidian and true 16 phase. This is old school. How well it performs, obviously, is gonna depend on our testing. So the Phantom Gaming X is high-end, but X570 Aqua is ultra-high-end. Now, essentially, the Aqua is the same as the X570 Creator below it, if you just pull back to show both boards. So they've taken the X570 Creator, and they've added this uh, armor here around the slots, and this monoblock that comes down here, which actually looks a lot better than many monoblocks of the same type. That's a lot more sophisticated in appearance than, say, a uh, water force. However, we don't know pricing of these boards. As I say, AMD hasn't let them say. That's going to be like a thousand bucks, which means that this is going to be something like 
400. Now, I'd expect a board like this to be maybe 300, but this has got extra features as well. So it's a high-end board. It's got heat pipe, uh, VRM uh, heat sinks, active cooling. We understand all that. It's also got Thunderbolt 3 around on the I.O. Anytime you see Wi-Fi on new motherboards, there's going to be Wi-Fi 6. There are some refreshes of boards here, existing models, that add Wi-Fi 6. So that's nice, but it's not particularly, uh, how can I put this, visual. The Ethernet here is 10 gigabit of Quantia. That's £50 worth right there. And then in addition, we've got this weird little feature here. A display port internally. There's a display port on the I.O. as well. So two display ports, they are independent. Uh, if you have a graphics card with an internal connection, instead of having to feed a cable outside, you can plug it in on board. That's a neat little idea. Frankly, if they just switched out the AMD mounts for Intel mounts in that same way as that Mini ITX, we'd have a truly innovative board. But they've got enough space here, so they've gone with the tried and true mounts. That's interesting. The Aqua looks gorgeous, but essentially it's the same board with more bling and obviously built-in liquid cooling. So expensive and expensive. Other boards? Less dramatic, X570 Pro 4, we understand the Pro 4 uh, range, uh, obviously it's X570 chipset, the board itself is quite conventional, X570M, Micro ATX Pro 4, so Micro ATX version thereof. And as we go across the range and put photos on the page to show you more options, however, we've seen the most interesting, once again it looks like that X570 Mini ITX board, it looks like ASRox knocked it out of the park when it comes to innovation. Once again, ASRock has shown us the way forward with innovation. Thunderbolt 3 on AMD is excellent. Using Intel cooler mounts on AMD is frankly genius. Love it to bits. Really good. What we need now, of course, is prices, and that's entirely in the hands of AMD. As soon as they say the uh, motherboard manufacturers can tell us, they can tell us. But not until then, so I guess that's 7th of July. That's frustrating. This is ASRock at uh, Computex 2019. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the bell button, return. We're going to put more videos up during this week. I'm Leo Ward for Kit Guru at ASRock.